Tamper-proof bombs. Remember when they were relevant? Nine years ago? Well, I didn't, until I saw this Reddit post. Maxiface posted an image caption, Disable this, I dare you. It was disabled pretty quickly. However, this sparked the interest of a few individuals, one of them being VioleneStyland57. He posted this bomb, which used a very clever two-part priming system for his bomb. Covering up the bomb would activate skulk sensors dispensing items into a dropper, whereas the second activation would cause the item to activate a comparator, initiating the bomb's temper tantrum. However, this bomb has two fatal flaws. The first flaw was the casing which was made of TNT. This meant that you could use sticky pistons and slime blocks to open the casing without triggering the skulk sensors. And two, you could interact with droppers without making any noise which meant that it was easy to disarm the bomb once the casing had been removed. The bomb has been defused. And now it was time to make my own tamper-proof bomb, built on the successes and failures of its mighty predecessors. And like a phoenix rising from the ashes of its fallen brethren, I present to you... is insanely difficult if not impossible to tamper with. Its scaffolding and TNT container ensures that any attempt to remove the shell of the bomb results in a fiery end. Even its internal circuits are impossible to tamper with. Breaking one simply causes the other to trigger the bomb instead, rendering any attempt to disable it futile. Use it to prank your friends, annoy your enemies, or to lower real estate value. So the way this bomb works is actually quite simple. Inside, uh, we have a basic skulk sensor system. So if the skulk sensor activates, it will uh, activate this repeater, which would then cause the TNT minecarts above to explode. However, there is something uh, that keeps it from exploding when you're building the thing, and that is this chest and comparator. So when you're building this thing, this redstone dust will be powered, uh, which causes the hoppers to lock. And these chests will be filled with items that then activate the comparator and lock the repeater. So even if the skull sensor activates, it doesn't uh, send a signal out to the TNT minecarts. However, once you're done with building the bomb, you power off this redstone dust and uh, fill in the gap where the lever used to be, which means that uh, the items will funnel out of the chest, which uh, deactivates the comparator and unlocks the repeater. So now any a sound that is made around this bomb will cause the whole thing to explode and even if you're inside, if you break the skulk sensor, the other one triggers if you open the chest to try to refill it with items to relock the repeater um, the bomb still explodes so there is no way to tamper with the inner circuit of this bomb the exterior of the bomb is also designed to create as much noise as possible if someone tries to tamper with it. For example, the TNT and scaffolding is set up so that if you try to move a TNT block, uh, the scaffolding will break and uh, the skulk sensors will activate. And finally, on the top to prevent players from using sticky pistons to remove uh, the TNT, we instead put TNT minecarts on top of wooden pressure plates. That way, if someone tries to remove the TNT minecarts, uh, the pressure plates will trigger and that will cause the whole thing to explode again. And you might be thinking, I'm overcomplicating this with TNT and scaffolding. Why not just use immovable blocks like barrels or furnaces? Well, I tried that and I posted the design on Reddit and somebody had the brilliant idea of blowing up the bomb with another bomb. And spoiler alert, it worked. Turns out if you blow up TNT far enough away, you can destroy the barrels without activating the TNT on the inside, which means that this whole design is completely useless, and I had to redesign to this one, which is better and also uglier. So if you want to get started with building your own tamper-proof bomb, you are going to start by putting a redstone dust on top of the scaffolding, uh, and build with building blocks uh, in a pattern like this. And then you're going to put non-solid blocks on these two spots. Afterwards, in these gaps, you're going to put hoppers with chests on top of these hoppers and comparators leading out of those chests into repeaters facing outwards. Afterwards, you're going to put building blocks on top of the repeaters like this, uh, target blocks here, and more building blocks uh, like this. And finally, you're going to put a redstone dust in these two spots. 
Now you're going to want to power this redstone dust. Don't worry, it won't activate the TNT below. And you're going to put powered rails on top of here and uh, fill these chests with items. I actually recommend a stack of items each. And finally, we're going to put skulk sensors on top of these non solid blocks. And we're going to fill these rails with TNT minecarts. And now all we have to do is just build around with TNT. Be careful to avoid the skulk sensors, otherwise you're going to blow yourself up. Uh, be careful of this lever as well. So just build around it like this. I'll build this S shape in the middle of the bomb and then cover everything up. And that is the core of your bomb finished. For the casing of the bomb, uh, it's important to remember this pattern of uh, alternating TNT and scaffolding blocks. You always want to have only one scaffolding block on top of the TNT. You don't want something like this, otherwise you could break the TNT and the other scaffolding will keep this block up. So you want to build this pattern all around the bomb. So that way if anyone breaks or moves a piece of TNT, a scaffolding will always break and create noise. The other important thing to remember is that you don't want to place TNT next to any of these blocks since they are all either being powered or they are going to be powered by the skulk sensor. You always want to follow the pattern because like I said if you put scaffolding like this it's going to keep itself up. So the first option is if these blocks are meant to have scaffolding in the pattern like this just put the scaffolding down. It's okay if you do this. However, if the pattern uh, intersects with this block, for example, you have to put TNT in here, otherwise you'll compromise the bomb casing. Just leave a building block uh, in the space that is not wool, because if it's empty and there is scaffolding here, you can still place blocks through the scaffolding and uh, people might still be able to tamper with the bomb. So just leave a building block there. That way, um, they won't be able to place wool without breaking the block and as you know, breaking the block will trigger the skulk sensor. So what you're going to do now is repeat this pattern all around the bomb so it covers the entire thing and that will make your bomb tamper proof. And once you're done with your casing, to finish up, we're going to put wooden pressure plates. It has to be wooden on these scaffolding blocks. And after this, we're going to put building blocks on top of these wooden pressure plates. And on top of these building blocks, we're going to put rails. I'm using powered rails, but it doesn't really matter because all you're going to do now is put TNT minecarts on top of these rails. And afterwards, we're going to break these building blocks so that they fall onto the wooden pressure plate. And that is your uh, tamper-proof bomb complete. To activate the bomb, all we're going to do is break this lever, place the TNT down, and place the scaffolding down. And this is why I put a stack of items in the hopper. It gives us plenty of time to uh, put down the blocks and get away from the bomb before it is active. And now, if we check inside, the items are funneling out of the chest. And when it does, the repeater unlocks and the bomb is now active. So. Any noise created, any block broken, uh, if any of these TNT minecarts are moved, the bomb will explode. So here is where I issue my challenge to you. Uh, below in the description will be a world download to this tamper proof bomb and I'd like to see if you can find a way to uh, deactivate the bomb without blowing it up. So you can't just cover obsidian and say, oh it does no damage, it's, it's, it's done. No, I want you to remove the bomb without a single piece of TNT exploding. Otherwise, it's just easy to, you know, d d cover it with obsidian, whatever. So if you do manage to disable it, tell me how you did it in the comments so that I can try it out for myself. And uh, yeah, uh, good luck with that. Alright, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Bye-bye.